Welcome. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some little habits that you can incorporate that will save you big money at the grocery store. Now I know that grocery prices are rising and sometimes that can make your blood pressure rise a bit too, but those rising prices don't need to cripple you. There are things that you can do, just little things that can make a big difference and save you hundreds or thousands of dollars a year. Yes, I do have some big, big grocery saving tips and I will leave those for another video, these are just quick wins today. These are things that you can incorporate right now, things that are not overwhelming that you can do to save money today. The first one is probably no surprise and that is plan ahead. If you don't have a plan when you get to the grocery store, then you're more prone to buy things on impulse or get things that you don't really need. You might also buy produce thinking like, oh, this can be made into a side for something I make later this week. And then before you know it, you open your produce drawers and what I call those good intentions have gone moldy at the bottom of your crisper. So if you plan ahead, you're less likely to purchase things on impulse and you are more likely to use everything that you buy, which is stretching your dollar. The next habit is to check your flyers. It's so easy nowadays because you can find those flyers online. You can also sign up to get emails from the grocery stores that you frequent so that you can get their flyers right in your inbox. And then what you wanna do is compare those flyers. I'm gonna give you a little tip for that later on, so just hold that in your mind for now. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna use the Freezer Meals 101 Club to create a custom meal plan for yourself using the things that are on sale. You can easily filter by protein. So if you found an amazing sale on chicken, you can click that chicken button and filter all the chicken recipes. Or if you found two for one beef strips like I did once, actually recently I found two for one chicken drumsticks. So anyway, with the beef strips, you can type beef strips into the ingredients bar and they will populate and you can just choose the recipes you want from there, add them into your meal plan and then your meal planning is done for you. And that leads us to our next little habit that you're gonna do and that is to bring a shopping list in with you. So you've got your custom meal plan in the club. You just click that little grocery button and it will print off your shopping list. You can also edit that to add other things that you need like toilet paper or whatnot. And you can edit it to take off things that are already in your pantry. That way you are armed with that grocery list when you go into the store and you're not as prone to get those impulse purchases because you know, nope, I'm sticking to my list. Now this next one might be a habit that you've heard of before, but if it's a habit that you're not doing, I want to encourage you to relook at this, and that is that you want to eat before you shop. Never go to the grocery store hungry. <laughs> when you go to the store hungry, and I have been guilty of this myself many, many times, you are prone to see things and be like, oh, I could eat that in the vehicle on the drive back, or, you know, that would make a great late night snack tonight. And you, <laughs> you are much more likely to purchase convenience items, treats, snacks, all of those things that really jack your grocery bill up. So you just wanna get in the habit of always going to the grocery store on a full stomach. Now earlier when we were talking about sitting down at home and going through your flyers, and you know, with the convenience that a lot of us have with having our phones and having access to the flyers right there on our phones, you could even do this in your vehicle or sitting at the bus stop or sitting at the library. This is no longer something that you're relegated to do only at home. But when you're checking those flyers, what you can actually do is you can save yourself money on gas by only shopping at one store if that store honors competitor pricing. 
because then if you write some notes on your shopping list and you bring those flyers in on your phone with you, you can just show them to the cashier and they will honor the competitor pricing. That way you are not having to drive around and waste time and waste gas going to multiple stores, but you're still able to get the very best deals. This video came about because one of my sons is getting to an age where he's thinking of moving out on his own for the first time. And he's starting to realize, you know, when you get to that stage where you're thinking of, you know, maybe it's time and whatever, you start to open your eyes to how expensive things are. Like you never realized because your parents paid for things. You didn't think about things like, you know, how much it was to buy those snacks that you wanted for a movie night or whatever, those little things. And so he's starting to have his eyes opened and he's realizing things like, you know, utilities and groceries cost so much more than he ever had thought of. And so recently I was going to the grocery store and I just invited him to come with me. I was like, you and I are gonna go and I'm gonna teach you everything I know about how to save money. Like I was saying earlier, I have bigger money saving things that, you know, take more than just these little habits that I'm sharing today. One of those I'll just throw out as a bonus tip, but our, um, in our area, there are grocery stores that on the first Tuesday of the month do 15% off. And so obviously I pretty much only shop on 15% off day. And because I do freezer meals, I'm able to shop a whole lot less, which saves me money also, but allows me to really take advantage of that 15% off day. So yes, I was going to impart my wisdom with him about all these years that I have been saving money on groceries. I've done it with you know, my older kids that kind of came before him and I will continue to do it with the younger kids as they get to kind of that age. And so as I was teaching him these things, I thought maybe I should make a video of these tiny little things that you can do that make a big, big difference. So one of the things that I was showing is that when things like meats or cheese have a set price on them, like you've got a whole big grocery store case full of packs of chicken and every single one of them is $7. They're not actually the same price for the same amount because there are weight differences. So if you just like randomly grab something out of the case and throw it in your cart and you continue on and then you get over to the cheese section and they also have cheese that has a single price on it, right? Maybe it's like $13 for this giant brick of cheese, but the weight is different. So if again, you just grab the first one you see and throw it in your cart, you are leaving money on the grocery store shelf. I was able to show him like a, a really significant weight difference between some of these packages. Now our store that day had ground beef packaged that way. They had chicken packaged that way. They had cheese packaged that way. Uh, there was one other thing, but I'm not remembering it at the moment, but it was a type of meat that was packaged that way. And so it matters, like, especially if you're cooking for a family, even if you're cooking for just one person, it matters because the meat's going to stretch further if you've paid the same price, but gotten a pretty decent increase on the weight in that package. So you're getting more bang for your buck and it's a pretty simple thing you can do. And actually it doesn't take long. The weights are written right there on the label. So go ahead and go through, find the ones that weigh the most. And then you can kind of feel like you've got a little secret as you're like checking out. You're like, Ooh, I am saving more than that guy behind me who just went and threw whatever package, like the first one that he saw into his cart, because truly, yes, they are all $7, but they are not the same amount of meat for $7 each. So now after you've picked the heaviest meat and cheese that you can from these set priced items, next you're going to swing by this area in your store that a lot of people don't even know exists. And it doesn't exist in every store, but it exists in most of them. And it is the deeply discounted section. Now it doesn't have its own aisle. 
it it's not labeled like it it doesn't have a big thing on the aisle marker announcing like this is the deeply discounted section but almost all grocery stores have them and what it will be is it's usually in a really inconspicuous aisle like sometimes you'll find it down the dog food aisle sometimes you'll find it down the pet food aisle or you'll find it with the cleaning supplies the toilet paper it's in those kind of aisles sometimes in the seasonal item aisle and what it is it's it's things that are going to be discontinued that store is no longer going to be carrying them and so they are deeply discounted we're talking like something for six dollars is a dollar like this is 50% or more off of these items. Sometimes you're looking at an 80% savings, which in a grocery store is almost unheard of. So that is my little habit that I want you to incorporate the next time you're at the store is just swing by. It's hardly out of your way. You're in the store anyway and see what they have. Now, it's very important. I'm giving you another bonus tip. Do not buy things just because they're on sale. No matter how good the deal is, it's not a deal if it's something you didn't need. But if it's something that you know you're gonna use in the next few months, of course, check the expiry date. You don't wanna get something that's about to expire and have paid for it and then end up having to throw it out, right? Not that expiry date, that's a, full, that's a whole other video. But anyway, you get what I mean. But if there is something that you're gonna use anyway, like grab it. This is the time to take advantage. Now, with him, you know, we're at the store and I'm teaching him, and in that aisle were these bags of chili powder to refill your spices. Now, what is something that almost no one has when they first move out of their parents' house? Spices, seasonings. One of our other sons just moved out, and at his new place, we had given him a spice rack for Christmas a few years ago, and it's a pretty beautiful spice rack. It's even got this like um, chalkboard paper that you write on the labels with. It's, it, it's nice, but they were empty. The bottles are empty, and sometimes you can buy them full, but because we were getting it for him years before he was moving out, we figured, okay, we better <laughs> buy him one where it's empty, and then that, that way he can fill it with fresher spices and seasonings. But now he's having to fill these, and yes, as I taught him, he's going to the bulk store to buy those spices because that is the least expensive place in our area. But for this other son that was with me, it's like there's chili powder, bags of refilled chili powder for your spice jars and they are a dollar. Now, $6.94 is what they usually are and they're a dollar. That's again, not a good deal if you're already, if you're me and you have like a giant, <laughs> bulk size chili powder. This is my chili powder. I do not need more chili powder. So even a dollar for me would be wasting money. But for him, who's just starting out and doesn't have any chili powder and loves chili, hello, yeah, he's gonna buy that for a dollar, right? So that's my other little habit is that you're just gonna swing by there. You're gonna just do a quick scan it's not the whole aisle, it's, it's usually like just a section. And you're gonna have a look, you're gonna see, nope, none of that, I don't need any of it. Actually, I have found some great stocking stuffers in there. There's often like lip balms or um, like those, um, you know, the face masks <laughs> that you do. Things from the beauty section in the grocery store are often in there interspersed with things because there's no rhyme or reason in that section. And that's kind of how you can identify it in your store when you're looking for this deeply discounted secret section. Um, <laughs> and so yeah, I've found great stocking stuffers over the years, but yes, swing by there. And then you're gonna head to the checkout now, of course, I did not add these as habits that you should incorporate into, you know, into this video. I'm just going to kind of give them as bonus habits here. And that is things like be sure before you go to the store that you have loaded up your app or your store card with any of the offers that they have that week, because that's a great way to earn points towards things or to or get discounted prices or you know depending on what the store offers are but I'm always sure that I do that that's a very quick little win um, and then you check out again 
competitor pricing, you do all the things to get the best deal, you walk out of there so proud because you saved all the money. Now you've gotten home and you're gonna incorporate one more habit into your life that is gonna save you so much money. And that is that you're just gonna double your dinner. So you bought the things to make the spaghetti sauce, you're just gonna make two, you're gonna serve one that night and you're gonna freeze the other one. Because you got the ground beef on sale. So this is already costing you less than it's gonna cost you next time. And nothing's going to waste because you got one in the freezer. You also have less to think about. You're gonna save get money on gas because you're not gonna be going to the grocery store as often, all these things. And then tomorrow night, when you go and you've meal planned, so you know exactly what you're making. So the next night when you go and you're making Mediterranean chicken sheet pan dinner because it's amazing, you're just gonna make one to put right on the sheet pan and you're gonna make one, put it in a bag for the freezer and get it in your freezer so that you've now got two meals in your freezer, two meals in your belly and you just continue on. Before you know it, you've got a week's worth of meals sitting there and they almost feel like they were for free because yes, you paid for the groceries, but none of that produce went to waste in your crisper. It's all in use. It is all going to be used for what it was intended for. You know, if you want, of course, if you don't want to make one and freeze the other, you can come home from the grocery store and make them all as freezer meals right then and there to make triple sure that nothing is going to go to waste. Every single thing, including that produce, is going to get in those freezer bags and in your freezer and that means nothing gets wasted. Cooking this way also allows you to take advantage of the sales, buy in bulk when it's smart to do so. It isn't always, but it's such a great feeling to be able to stretch your dollar. Another one of the things that I was able to share with my son the other day at the grocery store is that back when I wasn't working and our kids were really young and we had a lot of them, <laughs> we had we had seven, but we had five of them like all in a pack. There's five that are in, in a five year span. So those ones, you know, it was like <laughs> compressed. And so it, I was really busy and I was not working outside the home, but I felt like it was my job, like it was, it was something I could do to contribute to our household income to save money. And that's actually when I learned a lot of the things that I still use today. And I was able to get our grocery budget for a family of nine to what was typical in our area for a family of four. And I did that for years and years and years. And so I know that even though I wasn't out earning money, I had a different method of earning money, which was saving money. And I contributed so much financially to our family during that time because of that. So he was actually really impressed because I had a number that I was able to give him and he was like, oh, over the course of all those years, that's like a vehicle. And I was like, yes, it is. Which I also drove the same vehicle for 18 years and that probably helped our finances a lot too. <laughs> and actually, fun story, one of our daughters, the daughter that we had to get that vehicle when she was born, she was kind of a, a surprise baby. It was like, I know there are surprise babies and then there are surprise babies. She was a surprise baby. Uh, we had adopted her older biological sister, didn't know that her first mom was expecting her and got a phone call from a social worker saying there's been this baby biological sister to your daughter she was born yesterday we forgot to tell you everybody kind of thought someone else told you and so we realized that you guys had no idea and at that point we had four kids and we had actually thought you know we were planning on six but four is a lot, like a lot. <laughs> we were like, four is also a nice even number. Like, you know, four is good. So we were thinking 
this is our family, this, we're done, right? And so we get this phone call and, you know, sorry, we forgot to tell you, what do you think? Like, <laughs> and so my husband was working from home at the time, I went down to his office, I was like, I think we just had a baby. And yes, that night, two hours after that phone call, I was, uh, our daughter came into our house. Um, I looked at the time and I know exactly what time it was, the minute that she came in. And we later found out that that was to the minute, 24 hours after she had been born, which I always thought was so cool. And that night, my husband and I are sitting on the couch, our other kids are in bed and I'm holding her and he has a baby name book because we don't have a name for her yet. And so he's sitting there with the name book and I'm sitting there like staring at this beautiful baby and just kind of feeling amazed and in love and you know, all those warm feelings. And it, the thought suddenly occurred to me we don't fit in our vehicle. <laughs> we do not fit in our vehicle. We were foster parents at the time. We, um, we were foster parents for eight years. And so we had this little boy that we loved so much and we were long-term foster parents to him. So we had our four and then we had him and now we had another one. And so we didn't fit in our seven passenger van anymore. We needed an eight passenger van. So, we couldn't find a used one. We ended up for the first time ever buying a new vehicle to be able to fit this baby. The part about the story that it's kind of nice, I mean, it's all nice, we like, it's the best story ever, right? Surprise baby, like it doesn't get better than that. But is that that baby is not a baby anymore. She is 19 and she is driving that van <laughs> she is now driving that van that I drove for 18 years and now she's been driving it for a year. And so, yes, it is still in the family. It still runs. It is a great vehicle. Oh my goodness. Toyota Sienna. I am giving a shout out. 19 years, never had a problem. So there's that. But um, I, am, I have like gone down. If you are still with me, I am amazed because I am no longer talking about groceries and I apologize about that. But this story about my daughter is kind of near and dear to my heart because who can say they got a surprise baby? Like it's, it's pretty awesome. Like it was a Tuesday, you know, when, you, when you're thinking like, you know, Tuesdays are pretty boring and nothing much can happen. Well, you just never know what might be around the corner. <laughs> so, and um, then we had five and we, yes, we ended up with seven. So that's a story for a different day. How, you know, we thought we were done at four, but sometimes God has other plans. So anyway, talking about groceries, talking about vans, talking about babies, uh, you know, thank you if you have stuck with me for this long because, oh my goodness, definitely check out the Freezer Meals 101 Club if you are looking to save thousands of dollars a year on your grocery bill. If you are looking to save money with just little tweaks, please, please incorporate some of these tips, at least a few of the easier ones. They are quick wins and easy ways for you to start feeling like, hey, I am a, well, like we should have like a superhero shirt that's like, you know, money saver kind of thing. Anyway, um, because you can be a money saver too. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today and happy cooking.